Matthew here from FiberglassSupply.com. In this video, we are going to show you how to initiate polyester resins. This could apply to polyester and vinyl ester resin systems. There's a couple of things that we need. Uh, you're going to want gloves, safety glasses, a mixing container, preferably one that's graduated, a catalyst dispenser, or a measuring cup, or a pipette, depending on the quantity that you're doing. So for small quantities, the pipette works great. To get the right amount of catalyst or initiator. Um, if you don't want to get a catalyst dispenser, the small measuring cup will work for almost every other application, but if you're doing it frequently, the graduated dispenser is very useful. The other tool that you're going to want is a calculator. Uh, the reason for that is it helps make the calculations easy, especially if you're varying the rate that you're putting in. And then we need some mixing sticks as well. Most of the resin systems that we carry are a laminating system, which means that that is going to cure with some surface tack on it. The reason for that surface tack is so that you can bond subsequent layers to it without having to do any sanding or prep work ahead of time. When you go to finish, uh, you're going to want to add some surface agent to it, and what the surface agent will do is remove that surface tack so that you can either sand it or so it's just not sticky on the surface anymore. Surface agent we typically will add to our laminating resin before we initiate it. Uh, depending on what we're doing, if we're just trying to get rid of the surface tack itself, we'll probably go around 1% with the surface agent. And if we're using it as a sanding resin, we'll go up to 2%. Uh, but the instructions for the surface agent are on the surface agent bottle. We're not going to show that in this video, we're just going to show how to initiate it for laminating. If you have any questions on that, please get a hold of us. All the polyester resin and vinyl ester resin systems that we carry uh, use MEKP, methyl ethyl ketone peroxide, as their initiator or catalyst. Except for the infusion vinyl ester, the Hydrex 100, that uses CHP. But generally, if we're talking about a hand lamp system, uh, MEKP will work fine. In some cases, you can also use uh, Azox catalyst. But we'll discuss that in a different video. Generally with catalyst, you want to go uh, somewhere between 1 to 2 percent. Depending on the specific resin system, you may be able to go a little bit lower than that and a little bit higher than that. For the specific resin system that you're using, uh, get a hold of us or get the technical data sheet and it should give the range of catalyst that you can put into it or initiator. So like I said, generally you're going to catalyze or initiate between 1 and 2 percent. And if it's colder out, you're typically going to put more catalyst or initiator into the resin. If it's warmer, you're going to put less. Also, your pot size matters. If you've got a big, massive resin like this and it's going to be in that bucket for a while, you might want to put less catalyst into it. If you've got a small or you're going to be a thin film laminate, you might want to put more catalyst into it. So more catalyst, it'll cure faster. Less catalyst, it'll cure slower. More catalyst, you'll have a shorter pot life. Less catalyst, you'll have a longer pot life. So use those as some guidelines, uh, but you'll need to figure out for your application and for your situation what you need to do for a catalyst level. In this case, we're gonna do a percent and a half. So I have 250 milliliters here of our isothalic tooling resin. So 250 times 0 0.015 for percent and a half is 3.75 so about four milliliters of initiator so I'm gonna squeeze the bottle here there's a graduated markings on there and I squeeze it until it gets to about four milliliters right there then we're gonna add that to the resin and mix thoroughly in this case uh, we can mix for about a minute and that would be sufficient the polyester resins are a little different than epoxy. Uh, epoxy takes more hardener to set it off, and this is an initiator. So what this really does is it initiates the reaction and does not need to be stirred as thoroughly as epoxy. With epoxy, we recommend stirring for two minutes. So once we have that thoroughly mixed in, uh, we'll go to work with it and start building our part. Generally, once your catalyst is mixed in, the resin is going to change slightly in color. This is because the 
catalyst and the mineral salts like cobalt in the resin are beginning to react with each other. And so that is one indicator that you've mixed in a catalyst to your resin. We also do carry red catalysts. So if you're doing a, a project or a part that is not cosmetic and you need a clear catalyst for that, you can use a red catalyst. And the red, uh, exact same thing, just has some red dye in it so that you have an indicator that you've actually mixed catalyst into your resin. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below or get a hold of us. Thank you.